you got to put the work in on top of it. Like, like it's not all going to come for free. It's not going to be handed to you, but you can be positive. You can be motivated and you can work hard and you can achieve what you want to achieve. If you're willing to do that. Flex Lewis, you're straight out the left. Today's guest needs no introduction, but for those who have been hiding under a freaking rock, he is the winner of 26 international competitions, a three-time Arnold Classic champion, and a four-time World Strongest Man champion. The nicest, strongest, biggest friend I have in my life. This is a podcast with Brian Shaw. Just, just loves the fucking piss all the time. I mean, I don't, I don't mind pissing. Is that, you know, I mean, it's enjoyable. It's an enjoyable thing, especially, yeah. especially when you haven't for a while and then you need to, you know, like you're in a car and you can't go and then you can't go. It's very relieving. Yeah. I mean, very do, nice. do you know somebody that just doesn't like that? I don't know anybody like that. No, I know. I yeah. don't know. You're just kind of talking to the ma. Everybody's going to agree with you at this point in time. You would, if you can't agree with that, it's weird. I know. Well, you, you're the one that's talking about it. I mean. Huh? Welcome to Straight Out of the Lab, Brian Shaw. <laughs> that was that was an amazing intro. I fucking love it. Am I Good keeping job. it too? Good job. Are we keeping that? Uh, uh, and the only Perfect. reason why you asked is because it's like if I need a pee in the middle of the podcast, can I leave? I was like, no, you got to go now. <laughs> okay, so that's the rules. So no, you can you can do whatever you want. Yeah, uh, I I do have to say before um, we go any further, um, thank you for making me look bad in this podcast straight away. Why is that? Because I've left my wedding band in the house and yep. you went and trained earlier and, and took it off and then asked. Yep. <sighs> Good asked job. I you to go and get your yep. fucking ring. You got that? Yeah. Can, can, can I see look it. at this ring, by the uh, way? You want to see? see yeah, I want to see how big it is. This one's pretty tight, but uh, I, I like it a little bit tighter for this. It's just a, one of the rubber ones. Yeah, I, I, got, a, I got a rubber one too. Let me... Uh, all right. Well, if I put it on this, that means officially, you know. Are you taking it? No. I'm okay. just saying, no, definitely not. I'm saying, you, I might be taken by you, but if, oh, I, is that right? if I put it on it. <laughs> so I just put it like, I was going to actually leave that there. Yeah. No, this is, a, what size ring is this? Jesus. Bro. I don't, I honestly don't know. Right. Yeah. 15, yeah, I, I, 16, something like that. That is a, look at that, on my little finger. Yeah. <laughs> Some big fucking hands. That's yours, Brian. Nice, dude. My nice, man, nice. welcome, welcome. Appreciate it, gym, man. Right? It's it's great to be on here, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm uh, really uh, happy for all the success you've Thank had you. with this, and uh, you know it's been it's been fun seeing some of the guests that you've had, and you know I feel like you're refining your podcast <laughs> skills and, and making it happen, man. That's awesome. So what you're saying is you waited for me to get a little bit more English speaking for you before you came on, right? Well, I'm not I'm not going to say that out loud, but you know <laughs> I was. I was just waiting for you to, you know, step step the game up, which you have. <laughs> oh, okay. And now I'm sitting in the chair, bro. You know, you I'm sitting. here. I'm here. I'm you here. are you. You yeah. are. You. And um, well, you you've been you've been busy all day. I don't know if what you can speak about or not, but yeah, yeah I go no, ahead, man. Really, well, yeah. busy like you, right? Like you, I feel like this week leading up to the Olympia, there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. You know, different obligations, different things like that. We're actually doing a booth at the Olympia, which is the first time that I'm doing a booth i've been at booths for years right yes yes yes. which you know have been either sponsor booths or or whatever that might be but it's literally us doing our own booth it's, it's the brian shaw booth yeah what is it what, yeah. what, what, what's the name so of it, it'll it'll be shaw strength and then Got you. we'll have undefined nutrition there which is my uh, line and then uh, evolution athletics which is basically kind of my my companies if you will yeah. which will be represented there so it's it's pretty pretty big man it's, I mean, it's kind man. of a kind of a proud moment you know it's, it's like uh, kind of come in full circle you know like you go through and you start your career wanting to get sponsored and wanting to get those opportunities and then go into the expos and wanting people to even want to say hi to you right yeah. and then you go through the whole gamut of having people that want to say hi to you and wait in line for crazy amounts of time and then now it's kind of come back to walking into this olympia for the first time ever having my own booth there is, is really neat bro it's it's, a, it's, a, it's kind of a surreal feeling you know yeah and and t to your point too it's it's uh it's here in vegas which is not far away from colorado which is where you you live in right yes colorado yeah yep, home um, base and um, I'm very happy. Obviously, I'm very happy. It's back in Vegas. You've seen the gym right now. And oh, and man. The energy is good. Yeah. Right? The, like, we came in and trained yesterday here, which it's neat. 
you know, I told you this last year with the gym. It's it's neat to see you come full circle, and and uh, I got to see the place out in Florida, obviously, and going and train there, and you know, it's it's neat, man. I'm so happy for you guys and and uh, your family, new new addition, right? Thank you, yeah. I haven't got to meet your little guy yet, you but will. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fun, man. That's it's neat to see you evolve, bro. Like yeah. honestly, like where where you you started from and coming up, and we've had these different conversations over the years, and mm -hmm. your success has has just grown and grown and grown and it's neat to see it's just like an evolution of of flex lewis right like on stage and your preps and and uh you know just kind of getting to talk a little bit of your mindset has been fun over the years man yeah. same for you though man listen to what what you say that about me i say that about you because i've been very privileged to well i'm a fan of of strongman as you know right i i've been watching strongman since gary taylor back in uh man, 1980s yeah because gary taylor is welsh <laughs> First yes. ever Welsh, world's strongest man. Love it, man. And um, I'm a massive fan. And, and something I don't know if you know about, but it's very symbolic, world's strongest man in my household. Because on um, the build-up to New Year's Day, all the heats happen. So uh, come January 1st, always is the uh, official strongman finals on January 1st. So prior to that, in the last days of December, there's always the, the, the groups you know, and they show the quarters and the final, semi-finals, and then they show the finals on New Year's Day. It's kind of a big thing in the UK, and it's it's such a traditional thing too. And I mean, you've got all my family that have watched this. Oh my gosh, for decades! I never thinking about fucking. I'm saying this for decades. Yeah, this is started my grandparents, my my mum and dad, and then we'd always watch yourself. Well, before yourself. Um, you know, years later, I don't want to something fucking not that old. <laughs> <laughs> and then I've been doing it a while, bro. You yeah, have, yeah, you yeah, have, yeah. but. But again, years later, when I was in uh, the sport and competing, then you were you were kind of on on your uh, trajectory in, in strong man. And what a fucking trajectory! What a story, mate. You know. Um, but I want to take it back to the to the early beginnings. Was was Brian Shaw always a strong whippersnapper young man uh, compared to everybody else in in, uh, in in his early days? Well, looking back, here's what I'll say is, is at the time, I don't think I realized how strong I was, right? So I had to do different things growing up. I worked on my uncle's farm a lot, right? So mm. you're throwing bales of hay and doing farm work and, and that type of thing. And it was just what I did. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn how to drive the truck at 12 years old to, to do that. Jeez. And it was, it was something that at the time, you just don't think twice about it. It's like, this needs to be moved. I'm going to pick it up and move it. Yeah. Is that normal for a 12 year old? Probably not. You know, Bale Hayes probably, you know, 50, 60 pounds, whatever that Dang. might be, but throwing that around. Yeah. So I did things like that. And then I played basketball when I was younger through high school into college. Playing basketball, I would say I was probably the best way to say it, more of a football player playing basketball, <laughs> right? I was just, yeah. I was just big and, and, you know, I had a hard time actually keeping my body weight down mm. for the game of basketball because I just naturally would put weight on. I would just get bigger and, and uh, you know, it was, it was tough coming into the season. It got harder for me as I got into college because I loved training. Mm. So I first started training for basketball, right, because I was, I was just big and I needed to be stronger. I needed to be faster. I needed to be able to, to jump higher, do these things to, to kind of take myself to the next level and play in college, open that door. And so that's when I went in the weight room for the first time was really for that, mm. to open the door there. And, you know, I wasn't necessarily training for performance, but looking back, I, I uh, just got in the weight room and I worked hard and I saw results and I got addicted to that very, very quickly. So I always wanted to practice with basketball and even, that's even from a really young age. Wow. So it was, it was, I was ultra competitive with myself ultra competitive with my older brother he's two years older than me so that drove me really really hard mm. but from a strength perspective to answer your question looking back it all makes sense right so i did things that were not normal when i was growing up when i was younger right so i i you know played basketball against all these different guys nobody was ever stronger than me nobody could ever move me you know, so I got in the weight room and once I learned the movements, yeah. then I got stronger very quickly. So I think it was just kind of a gift that yeah. I was given, to be honest. So where does strong man count on? Because it's not like I can, you know, sit here and think, oh man, that is, there's a strong man gym over there. There's a, yeah. I can go to this town and like, like that, that, that is kind of a, a unique 
entity within a u- unique entity. So where where does strongman training come from? Or the the allure that brought you into that. So I watched I watched World Strongest Man when I was younger, right? So especially through middle school, I got kind of infatuated with strength. I love strength. I love the concept of strength. I love the concept of being stronger. And so watching World's Strongest Man, at that time, it was not in the back of my head, okay, that's what I want to do. Mm. That's where I'm going to go. It was just, I love watching this. I love watching the power and the strength yeah. and the athleticism and all this stuff. And so playing basketball, it was it was kind of the the framework, if you will, to build my athletic base. But then for me, once I was done playing basketball, I needed something to fill that competitive outlet. That's really, truly what it was. So I was like, well, I love lifting. I, I love going in a train just to get stronger. And that's what I was doing at that time. And then when when I was thinking about my competitive career, I was like, look, I'm, I'm not ready to be done with it. I want to do something else. That's where Strongman was like, hey, I'm big. I'm looking at my body weight. I'm looking at my height. You know, hey, I, I feel like I could fit in yeah. and do this. But there are no really gyms where I can train. There's no equipment. So I, I found a local contest that I did, mm-hmm. but I went there and did it without ever training on anything. Nothing at all. Nothing. Yeah. Just just entered. I was just training in a normal as a world gym wow. where I was training. So I, I just did that, went in there, won. And all the events I was doing for the first time literally during the contest. So that's not normal and the access has gotten a lot different it, it, you know since i started which is awesome yeah. so a lot of gyms now it's more of a functional training right so you you'll find a gym that has maybe a tire to flip or some type of strongman implement maybe a farmer's walk or yoke or something that you can at least try out to yeah. some aspect so that's that help, has helped a ton with access because a lot of people aren't comfortable with just walking into a contest and saying, well, I've never trained on equipment. I'm going to go lift these big weights. Was that anybody? I, I loved it. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I loved it, man. I, I, I'm not scared. I was never scared to put myself out there and, and try something yeah. new and different. And, and I love the challenge of, of trying to, to go against the biggest and strongest that I possibly could. You know, it was something that I really kind of Im- – I really embraced. I liked it, yeah. right? So if I, there's a challenge and there's something that somebody else can do, I want to do it, Go right? On. Like I want, I want to challenge myself. I don't want to kind of stay in my comfort zone. And I may be, you know, it's kind of the, you know, big fish in a small pond versus like, go, let's go to a bigger pond and see what the next biggest fish is, right? Something yeah. like that, so. That's what I say about this, Jim. You, you want to be, a, you know, a world-class athlete, you got to be, you know, the smallest guy in this gym. Yeah. You know, not the biggest fish in the uh, big fish in the small pond. You need to be in the ocean, yeah. and um, and again, with with uh, with that being said, mate, what what year was that? What year was that? Was your first competition? So I did I did my first amateur contest in two thousand five, and then what was the what was the, the the path of turning pro? And when did you like officially, you know, find yourself in the mix? So I I turned pro and the system has all changed. Okay. We don't have to go into all that. But I got my pro card in 2006. So okay. as, a, as an American, you had the the pro card where you do a pro am is what they called it at that yep. time. You would compete with the pros and then the top placing amateur in that show would then turn pro. Mm-hmm. So I did that basically within six months of starting. So I started toward the end of 2005 and then by beginning of June. Um, May, June of 2006. I don't know when the contest actually happened, but it was it was about six months, so maybe six and a half, seven yeah. total to, to go from being a complete novice beginner, never touched it, to earning my pro card. Now, that didn't mean that I was the best pro by any stretch, but it was the open door, right, to, yeah. to kind of compete with the pros. So 2007 was kind of my first year where I competed on the circuit yeah. here in the States, and that used to look a lot different there used to be a lot more opportunities to compete here in the States, which has unfortunately kind of gone away. And I think that it, it's maybe hurt American strongman a little bit, but I competed and then I got some international opportunities uh, toward the end of 2007, which was great and kind of gave me that experience of traveling, competing, that type of thing. And then 2008 is the first year I qualified for World's Strongest Man. So that was kind of the open door. I got there. I got a feel of it. Uh, that was the only year I didn't make the finals. So I finished third in my group in 2008 and then came back in 2009, made the finals, and then I was on the podium. Uh, so top three in 2009. I finished third uh, behind 
Uh, that year was Adriana Savickas and Marius Pujanowski and then myself. So, you know, uh, pr- pretty good podium of, of guys, like, historically speaking. Incredible. You know, which was pretty cool. So that that was kind of the, I would say 2009 was probably the, the you know, hey, the light's on. This is a contest I'm going to win. I know it's there. You know, I'm, I'm basically on my way up, but now I've, I've opened that door to, to win. So. so from 2005 to 2009. That's basically, I mean, I was top three by the, by the end of 2009. I don't think anybody could argue that wasn't, I wasn't top three in the world at that point um, going into 2010. So. So, so take me from them years because it's an interest to me because from, a, from the athlete bodybuilder standpoint, um, I would have to be force feeding a shit ton of meals, as you know, I hate to eat. Uh, going from the 212 class all the way up to the open class, that, that was my, you know, my my everything, my daily, right? To to add that quality size on, it's all based around the dinner table. So between 2005 and 2009, yep. obviously the training and stuff like that, yes, but what was the biggest factor there? Was it was it the food quantity changed or what was it? I, w- I would say getting experience with the implements. Right. That was a massive part. Now, diet-wise, I would say that, that I needed to definitely eat harder. Right, so I, I had to kind of get in that spot where I was adding, trying to add quality weight, and I, mm-hmm. I was trying to keep that in my head because a lot of strongmen, especially at that time, it was like, "Hey, I'm gonna throw in pizza. I'm just gonna eat burgers and pizza and burritos and all this yeah. stuff. It, basically, anything to get more calories. It yeah. doesn't matter what kind of calories they are." I always tried to stay in the realm of eating somewhat healthy so that I could add a, a quality mass. So I was yeah. like, hey, if I can put on 15 pounds a year, that's about where I want to live, I, I, like somewhere in that realm. So I was never a guy that put on a lot of weight, massive, like, oh, I'm gonna jump up a ton mm. at one point. It was more gradual, gradual, gradual. You know, but for me, it wasn't hard. It, I, was, I got really lucky, and like I said, in that aspect, I mean, you know, I was trying to cut down to play basketball. So mm. I finished in college probably around 280, on the basketball court, something like that. But when I finished my my senior year in college, once I was like, all right, I'm done running. I'm not doing the individual workout and the team conditioning and all this other stuff. I was, I don't even remember weighing, you know, 280, 290, 300. Yeah. I was like up to 320 before it. I, I really even knew like what, what I had done at all, you know? So after, I would say after 350 for me was probably where I had to eat a little bit harder for a while. And then, getting up to about 400 i was again testing what i was what i would really do is i would kind of test what weight was the best for me based on the contest right right so you would you would always look at the events or i especially as i got more experience i would look at the events and say all right this contest has a lot of moving Mm. i'm going to try to come in a little bit lighter and try to work on those events and naturally what would happen is your training would change based on the events so if you had less moving and the weights got heavier body weight naturally would go up a little bit just because you're not training for those type of events so i didn't ever worry i got in a bad spot with with the weight gain at at certain points where i started to relate the number on the scale to how strong i was Ah. and that wasn't great for me so i was weighing in and, and i'd walk in and say god i feel good today but the number on the scales maybe i'm three or four pounds less than I think I should be. Now it would it would mess with my head going into training, which was yeah. bad. So I kind of I kind of got to a point where I was like, look, this is not good for me. I'm going to get off the scale. Mm-hmm. I'm going to just go in, and if my training's good, my weight doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's interesting that kind of evolution, if you will. But those years, man, it was it was refining skills. It was working on technique. It was trying to gain the weight that I needed to be the best that I could, uh, obviously trying to get stronger in the events that I was weaker at and just be well-rounded, you know, because in strongman, that's the name of the game, bro. It's, it's, it's not, it's not like, Hey, I'm going to be amazing at this one event that doesn't win championships, right? That sets records. That doesn't win championships. Winning championships is about being complete where you could throw any event, combination at me and it doesn't matter if it's for reps max uh we're moving doesn't matter i could i could i could take top three in every single event mm. if you can walk into a contest like that you're pretty hard to beat when do you get the actual lift so to go into the, the event so it's, you said you train for them or dictating on your weight so when, when would you get that like event list it's always different 
it's always different to answer that question and uh it, certain contests are historically speaking better at giving the events sooner okay. and then other ones they don't give it very soon at all i mean there's been times literally going to world's strongest man i've got on the plane to go there and i don't know exactly what my events are holy shit so you, you just yep. train a little bit of everything yep you you try to be well-rounded and, yeah. and and you know going into these contests i i look at the the history of it so i i, I will sit down and kind of say okay they've done this this is what they've kind of gone with this is yeah. the type of weight it's going to be and then you try to track that trend world's strongest man in general through certain years got heavier and heavier right so it's kind of like all right we're going to bump the weight up it's going to mm -hmm. go harder and then they kind of shifted around 2017 it was kind of the peak mm -hmm. where it got heavy super heavy so yeah. the arnold the arnold was ridiculously heavy worlds was very heavy 2018 it kind of took a step back yeah. and it was it was ironic how that happened because the weights kind of shifted back for both the arnold and world strongest man mm -hmm. so it wasn't it wasn't you know I don't know if it was coordinated or they talked and yeah. said, hey, this is getting a little ridiculous or what it was. But with Strongman, there's an interesting conversation to have about the type of weights that we lift because you want it to separate the competitors, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, for me, I think that's the biggest thing is, is trying to have the right weights in the contest where you have separation between all the top guys. So if you have an event and I've kind of talked about this now that we, we run the Shaw Classic in Colorado, which is a top level contest and we have all the top guys come, which is amazing. But I want a rule of thirds with that contest. So I, I put a lot of time and effort and energy into trying to pick the right weights in the events. Okay. So that, that three guys, if you have 10 guys, for example, which we have 16 in that, but let's just say for, for argument's sake, there's, there's 10 guys. Three, three of the guys are going to excel and crush the event. They're going to be very good. Yeah. Three are going to do it, and then three are going to struggle and or fail, right? Mm -hmm. So if you – now, that's hard. Yeah. It's very easy to say that's hard to pick those type of weights for the, for the strongman world because the guys always get better, right? Mm -hmm. So having that separation, but I don't, I don't want an event where it's a track meet, right? I want to have something where it's, it's at least challenging enough that if you're a fan yeah. and you don't know the sport very well – you can look at an event and say that guy's stronger that guy's not as strong right yeah. it's very visually it's easy to see it i don't want to stop watch finish where it's like hey you're two tenths of a second better to this guy right yeah. is that really enough separation in the world of strongman other events i understand swimming or running or that type of thing that's that's what you have to do it needs to be laser timed and, and tracked like that but with strongman you can you can manipulate the weights to challenge the guys enough so how hard is it to pick events knowing that you're you know one of the most liked athletes in the world if not the liked athlete in strongman and now you have your own show you know everybody yeah you you are trying to tailor your event so it's evenly and fair and then when you put the events on put the events out do you ever have any backlash by saying like oh he's only doing that because he's friends with this guy or whatever else or do you just do the events and go i don't care about what anybody thinks i don't think i don't think the first year maybe right so yeah. I, pu I put it on the first year and it was 2020 all everything was getting canceled right mm. and everybody's like you can't do that and i said nope we're clearing out my home gym i remember this. Ho actually home gym so we did one day uh at my place in brighton then one day at my place in the mountains yeah. made it happen right against all odds everybody was saying you can't do this it's not going to work you can't and i was like no we're doing it yeah right because i'm talking to these guys and i need to do something good for my friends, right, that are that are competing. Because all these guys are like, hey, Brian, you know, because a lot of them rely on prize money. Yes. They rely on sponsorship. And I was like, this is something we need to do. And I just told my wife, I said, hey, I don't know how we're going to do it. We're going to do it. But everybody, I think there was a little bit of talking maybe that first year about, okay, Brian's running this out of his gym. It, are the events going to suit him? But everybody looked at the events and said, wow, that's really balanced. That's a fair contest. It's, it's a fair contest. And bull, all three years now, there's mm -hmm. nobody, nobody will question it because it's balanced. It's fair. We're testing everything. Mm -hmm. Also, compared to something like the World's Strongest Man, we run eight events. They run six. Right. Right? So your top 10 at World's Strongest Man, there's 10 athletes. Now, granted, they go from a field of 30 down to 10. Mm -hmm. So you do have to get through the qualifiers. But with us, we're running 16. So I said it's a better mix you have more athletes you have more events 
So if you have a weakness, we're going to probably find it or we are going to find it with eight yeah. events, right? Six events, sometimes you or five or six, you can kind of potentially get lucky that you don't see something with eight, 10 might be better, but it's kind of that fine line. I feel like with eight, it's a very good number of events. So, so that's kind of my goal, but nobody could look at it objectively and say that it's not the best complete test of strength in, in the strongman world, mm-hmm. right? I don't think that you could argue that. So it's a being objective. Now it's been a little bit different because I have competed as well, right? So to make the contest successful, it's been very difficult for me as an athlete and and you would understand because you promoted different shows and things like that. But I'm, I'm literally on a forklift trying to move equipment a day or two before I'm competing, like to that level, walking in, carrying stuff, setting things up. And, and you just have to do that to make the contest happen. Right. So it's not an excuse. It's just, I want this to be successful. So I'm going to put it on my back and I'm going to carry it and we're going to, we're going to make it happen. Right. And, and that's, so that's what I've done. And so, looking at it objectively i don't think i don't think you can argue with it and i'm trying to i've got big goals with that for sure but i'm, I'm trying to do something good for the sport for the athletes for just just a strongman world in general um and it's been fun man it's been fun it's been a good challenge but you know the, the again picking the right events being objective about it and and i actually in all fairness would rather probably have my harder events in the contest if I'm competing in it, especially if I'm, I'm promoting it because that then nobody could say anything about the finish or whatever. So it's, it's been fun though. And I think that ultimately what it's about for me is the athletes, right? So the guys, cause if the guys, you can, the fans and everybody else can, can say whatever sitting back. But if there was anything going on where I was like, Hey, the guys feel like this is not fair. Brian's trying to set this up or whatever. Mm-hmm they would be the first ones to say, man. And that trust, that trust would not be there because they know, yeah. right? So it's, it's they, they've got to see it firsthand and what's being built there. And the guys come in and they know how we're going to treat them. They know what the contest is going to be. And now the fans are also excited about it. So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's been fun, bro. Like we're, we're growing a lot and, and uh, we'll have to have you out. I'd love for to. it, man. It'll be fun. It's in August, yeah. August in 2023. So tickets oh. are available for that, but um the, it's growing the bro it's growing huh where can i get these tickets so they they can go to the, the, we have a website it's okay. just the shaw classic.com okay. um it's held at the budweiser event center in colorado so you could also nice. look it up on the budweiser event center page but um there's a link over for tickets so anybody that wants to come it's it's a heck of an event man it's yeah. anybody that's co- we've had people come out that yeah. that have know nothing about strongman like my brother's neighbors they were just like hey we'll come we don't know anything about it and they came and talked to me afterwards uh we saw them at this this uh, party they had and they were like you know we've never seen that live yeah but watching what you guys did was phenomenal right it is so like to normal people it's just mind-blowing especially for kids too like Mm -hmm. anybody that comes out with kids it's like we're lifting a car or we're doing this crazy stuff or whatever it's just it's fun man so they were like we're coming back we already bought tickets for next year you know so it's neat to have the general public get excited like that because you your course can always have the hardcore base of fans that's going to come. I mean, we had people traveling over from Europe, from different countries Damn. just to watch the contest, which is great to have that support, but it's like that local people that could hop in their car and just drive there. It's fun, man. But anybody that wants to come, you know, it's, it's a good time. Yeah. So, well, I, I definitely be taking you up on that, on that offer. Thank you. As you know, I love it, man. Well, we it. here on, on top of that, I'm doing your podcast Yeah, and you need to come to Colorado. We've talked about it. Done. Okay, done. You've also got that. Yeah. If you've you bring the family out, man, we'll, we we will, we'll play with it because we'll, we both have kids. Yeah, right. So yeah. it'll it'll be fun. Oh, uh, I'll come on my own. <laughs> okay, he's he's trying to get away. You, no, your no, wife, no, your wife didn't hear that. No, yeah. no, no, no. I'm in the dog house. I've only nowhere in my wedding band all day. I left the yeah. house. In fairness, yeah. I did tell her though. But yeah, I will definitely take you up and that. My, my wife It'll be fun. Come out, I come out it. and do do my podcast. Yeah. We'll train a little bit. It'll be good. I, man. Yeah. Well, you've got this gym, and I said this to you yesterday when you came over to the. Uh, to to, to my gym um i seen that episode with you and juji geeking mm. out about all the gym equipment and and i was like oh man i'm a major four more year because that to me is my world but i said to you now that i go there like i can't even geek out as much because i've seen it i've lived through the video um but what a hell of a gym mate you it's, you have, it's fun yeah. you have created i mean think about it that that brian shaw 
2005 Brian Shaw if you can imagine fast forward and seeing what you've already achieved the 26 contests you've won globally the what is the four honor classics right is three, four? three three honor classics yeah, yeah. four world's strongest man um and this is coming from my head man by the way there's no reason no, it's, it's, I, yeah I, and I know that if they was to look forward and, and see what you've created I mean Jesus man what what a fucking legacy it's fun it's you know it's it's not I'm sure you probably look at it back at it the same way, man. I mean, you start you start from humble beginnings, right? And you have a dream. Yeah. And that's truly what it's all about, man. And and a lot of people will say probably now if they were to look at look at Flex Lewis, look at Brian Shaw and say, "Well, it must be nice, right? It must be nice." Mm. That's completely the wrong story. C- couldn't couldn't be further from the truth, right? You're you're coming up. I mean, for me, I started my parents' garage. Literally, my parents' garage, it was unheated, uninsulated, just trained year-round by myself. The the bars are so cold. I had to have little space heaters oh in there to make it, you know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So it's like like you're starting from such a, a humble place and making it happen, but it's a dream, yeah. right? You have a dream to execute and you have a dream to, to fulfill, right? And you start out, and, and I remember I started, and I, I told some people, hey, I'm going to go compete in strongman. And they said to me, well, like, world's strongest man. I was like, yeah. Mm. They're like, you're never going to be big, in, big enough and strong enough to do that. But mm-hmm. every, everybody, when you, when you lay it out there, and I'm yeah. sure you had this too, yep. the naysayers, man, they, the, the, the first thing when you say you want to go be better or do something awesome, people around you will get insecure, Right, and they'll say, "Well, I don't want you to do that because now you're going to level up." Mm-hmm. So the first thing is, "Well, you can't do that. That's not going to happen." So it's all this negativity. But in my mind, it was, "Well, why can't I be the world's strongest man? Mm-hmm. World's strongest man got to come from somewhere, <laughs> right?" I, I put my pants on just like the next guy. I yeah. can train hard. I, I have the tools, and I believe what I can do. So it's just about putting the hard work in and making it happen. And that's truly what it's about. And, and it's, it's that relentless grind. So, you know, looking back to that kid, so to speak, at that point, you know, I was packing my cooler. I was going to work. I would work all day, and then I would go to the gym. I would close the gym down. I would go to sleep, and I'd wake up, and I'd do it all again, right? Mm-hmm. It was a grind. I, ha- I had no balance. I didn't have a personal life. I didn't have a social life, right? It was just about me executing on where I wanted to get to, right? And I was willing to sacrifice. I was willing to give things up. I wouldn't go out with my friends because I needed to sleep and eat and get up to train. And I wanted to get further forward, but I had the vision of where I wanted to go and what I was going to do. And I was willing to pay the price at that point that other people weren't willing to pay, right? And that's, I I think you you can relate to that. I guarantee you can relate to that. And and every athlete that I've had on you has achieved greatness. Or that, I, that I know personally, all have sacrificed. They've they've all been, um, you know, they've all had to put themselves into basically a cocoon, live a monotonous, very repetitive, mon- mundane monk life, to become great. Yeah. And um, I think, that, and then the hardest thing about going through that stage, and then when you achieve, you know, uh, an accolade, or you achieve, you know, the the highest pinnacle in in your sport, in my sport, is then stay motivated to continue that, continue your reign. And what did you do <coughs> during them, them years to, to remain motivated? Because now you've achieved the greatest title you could, could have ever, uh, could ever win. You, you, you've got the Super Bowl of World's Strongest Man on your shelf. What was the motivation <coughs> to go after another and another and another? For me, it wasn't about one title, right? It was about being the best to ever do it. Right. And that's, that was my mindset from, from the beginning. So when I, when I went into it, I remember some of my training partners, I won my first world strongest man title and they were worried about my mindset going forward because up to that point, everything had been focused on winning that title it was yeah. all, Hey, I don't have this title. We're winning that title. We're training hard. We're pushing to the next level, mm-hmm. all of that. So to win that title, I was back in the gym right the next day I got home. <laughs> Right. And, and, and they're like, wait a minute, what's next? And I said, we executed on that mission. Now we're going on to the next mission. Right. So it's a small moment in time to celebrate that. Now, that's not for everybody. 
that's not for everybody. There's there's a lot of guys, and I've, I'm sure you've seen it in bodybuilding, and, and I've seen it in strongmen, where it's all about one title. Yeah. You get one, the hunger's gone, the drive's gone, the passion's gone. I I did it right. I I got the one. The monkey's off my back. I'm, I'm not I'm I'm not ever focused again like that. Yep. And like I said, my uh, my mindset was to be the best, the best to ever do it. Right. So that's not that's not easy. But again, one title doesn't get you that. Two titles doesn't get you that. Three titles, you got you got to get more right. Mm-hmm. And I know that there's been different things for me, and going through my career especially as I started having more success, I started thinking about the longevity. I started thinking about the business. I started thinking about family, where I wanted to be in life at certain points. So I've had opportunities through my career that have probably looking back been a distraction to my strongman career. You know, I filmed TV shows. I filmed, uh, you know, different commercials or, or whatever it might be. But I've also opened up businesses. So I, I have a lot more distractions, have had a lot more distractions from just my training, but I wanted to do it all, right? Mm-hmm. And I wanted to have a family and I wanted to be the best at everything I possibly could be. Looking back in hindsight, let's just say I had to have done some of that stuff. Would, would there be five titles? Would there be six titles? Possibly, right? But mm-hmm. I've also built myself up into a different position that a lot of strong men will never get to and don't get to, right? Agreed. So you you have I've taken opportunities and I've capitalized on those opportunities and I've put a lot of hard work into that. But you know, for example, I'm going I'm going literally, and this is crazy for me to think about, but I'm I'm going to world's strongest man. I'm competing in my own supportive gear that not only am I wearing now, I'm literally sponsoring other athletes that are competing at world's strongest man, I'm sponsoring them with my company. Wow. Right. Is that not crazy? It's incredible. I mean, it's literally like, that's never been done. No, it's never been done. So it's, it's to, to create that in, in my career. So starting from where I started yeah. to this point, okay, you win the titles, you do all this stuff business wise. It makes me so proud yeah. to, to accomplish all that type of stuff. So it's, it's about the legacy, but you know, even for you, man, it's like, coming back and i'm sure that you understand that mindset you win one okay how are we going to improve Mm. because i'm sure that every every olympia you went through you look back and you say okay where what's a weak point here i won but i could have improved here i could have been a little bit better a little sharper a little little Mm. more detailed here so you analyze that and that's what i would do too so i would come back and win world's strongest man but i would say well i drop points here i could have done this better through training this could have been executed better so i wasn't ever content never content Mm. with i wasn't ever satisfied with what i had done it was always the next thing it wasn't about hey i'm good enough let's let's take the foot off the gas i'm I'm good enough it's been that through my whole career but again it's it's an interesting story because you have all these different things business wise and you know i i wouldn't change it man i wouldn't change the opportunities and i'm really proud of what i've been able to do you know looking back i think once you get the titles and and do all that type of stuff the other X factor to this is how can you motivate and change people's lives on top of that, right? And that's mm. probably right now, in hindsight, looking back, the coolest part of all of this is, yes, you've got the, the titles. Yes, you've got the accomplishments. Yes, you've got, you know, business or, or all this other things. But through all of it, it's it's the people that will say, you, you motivated me, Brian, right? You helped me to, to kind of get up off the couch to do something with my life, yeah. to go after my goals. And I think for me, legacy-wise, that's that's really important, right? And it's really important to have a positive impact on the world because you have different champions in different sports that, that never kind of cross over into that realm, where they're, they, they care about motivating other people as well, right? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you could put all the championships aside. You could put all the accomplishments aside. It's what, what is your lasting impact on people, Absolutely. right? And, and I think that that's so important to me um, as an athlete, now as a father, husband, these type of things, 
uh, business owner, all of that, right? Like you, you have all these different things going on, but to have that impact on people, man, is is really really cool. It's it's fulfilling. But also, man, to give you credit too, there's <clears throat> there's athletes that will compete and be really good at whatever they do in whatever sport it is. But when it comes down to motivation, they they couldn't really care less. Yeah. You know, you have to have uh, an element of wanting to pass back, pass forward, whatever term you want to use. Uh, and also, again, from somebody looking at somebody and being like, wow, that guy is an incredible player, that guy's an incredible athlete, whatever else. But then give him a mic and have him like, hey, young kids, this is, you know, whatever it would be, whatever the message would be, yeah. it's not there. You know, if, if, I think that's what separates you from the pack is um, – You've done a lot of collaborations. You've done a lot of different incredible fucking things. I mean, listen, man, you, you've, you've really driven the sport. And then Thor's also done a great job. Eddie's done. I know you guys are all kind of all friends and connected and things. But you've all got your, your it's out of the sport. You've, you've, you've gone on and, and done main three, mainstream things where uh, the general public... First of all, you stand out like a sore thumb. No question. <laughs> about it. But the general you know, public yeah. also... No, that's Brian Shaw. That's the world's strongest man. And that's got to be an incredible thing from from uh, you know a, a young uh, young man who has now devoted his life to to his craft and and got to the pinnacle and now is being recognised by the general public. But not also and not only that, the respect factor that goes with your name. Like my mum and dad know you from just a TV show, Discovery Channel, right? History, I mean, yeah, yeah, the History yeah, Channel. Yeah, excuse, yeah. excuse me, the History Channel. And also they knew you from Strongman on, you know, New Year's Day. And you win in the, the accolades and then chasing the title too. But they all love Brian Shaw. Show me one person that doesn't know love you and, and I, that is you. That isn't a, a editing team. That isn't anything else. And again, you touched also on the fact that you've got all these businesses that have come from Strongman. You've got an incredible YouTube, you know, platform which... You know, you and uh, your business partner have been working on that and, and you're pumping up videos all the time and, and they're fucking funny, they're instructional. Whatever genre, you're ticking them all, but you've got the, the fans that come in in the droves. And, and listen, you got to remember too, it's like, how many of them people are really strong, man? Yeah. That percentage of what's your videos are, are, are low. There's not, again, it's not a strong man gym. There's, there's probably more bodybuilders than there are strong men. I know there are. Yeah. But again, the translation and the, uh, I would say, the content that's put out by the, even the best bodybuilders in the world doesn't even come close to what you're doing. And you're doing feats of strength which, you know, draw draw the crowd in again. And then you're, you're doing it with such ease and you're also doing it with just this... I know sometimes you do just a, a lift and it's so jovial. You laugh and joke and I'm thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, this yeah. guy just picked up <laughs> like 18 plates. And he's like, ah, that's, that's, that's not heavy or whatever it would be. But um, again, I, I think you're a very, very likable person. Um, but I do have a question about that. Well, I appreciate all that. Man. Oh, that yeah, was, yeah. And I, I don't want to, no, so let, no, me, let me just, yeah, yeah, before I go into the question then, just yeah. let, let me just say that, the, give you, again, give you your flowers. I love saying that. Give you your flowers because I think a lot of people, don't get them until they're done and retired. Yeah. And for you being a current athlete who is um, at the top of the tree and um, truly believes that there's a lot more, uh, you know, run uh, another world's strongest man in, you know, in the box for you. That That is amazing. Plus you're doing all this stuff. Plus you're the dad. And, and then let me you know, skip a part, you know, over that too. An incredible dad at that too. Um is that is that now your main motivation for everything in your life? And I kind of know that answer, but that that ha the, the the Brian Shaw becoming a dad. What impact did that have in your life? Well, I th I think it had it had a big impact, man. I mean, it it changed it changed my life in a lot of different ways, yeah. uh, you know, and and um, gives different perspective, I think, on life yeah. in general. And I'm sure that you understand this. And it's fun for me being a dad, talking to another dad, especially at a, where you, when you've been at a high level. And I know like your moment, right? Standing up on stage, holding your daughter, like that moment, I, I've had different moments. Uh, that's <laughs> on it, the man. screen, say that's like, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that moment's huge, man. For me, I've I've been able to to have my boys at, at world's strongest man, or when I've competed at a high level, and and to have them watch me execute and do my thing. 
Um, I don't know that they're fully going to understand. Uh, now they're getting a little bit older, so I think they do. But it's motivating. It's yeah. motivating. Uh, it, it, it changed me in a lot of different ways and, and gave me perspective, like I said, about about life, right, and your legacy and, and um, you know, trying to teach them and show them, not just talk to them, but show them I'm going to go do this, mm-hmm. right? And and there are no excuses. You don't get to, the excuses are, are crap, man. And and yeah. uh, you know, in in today's society, it makes me it makes me concerned, but it also makes me excited because I think the more that I can teach them about how to execute, and and this is not only them but other kids, right? I love talking to kids, and I love going to schools and and doing these type of things because. So many kids out there don't understand right now with with the mindset, with the distractions. If you work hard, you can separate yourself in so many different ways. It's a, it's it's sad on one hand, but but so exciting for the kids that are willing to work hard. Mm-hmm. You're going to be able to separate yourself unbelievably from the pack, unbelievably yeah. right now, and the opportunity no is question. huge. And so for me, I think I look at it that way, and I say, hey, if I can if I can raise my boys uh, to have discipline to have the work ethic, to know that, that they, they don't have the word quit in their arsenal, right? These type of things, if I can instill that in them, they're gonna go very far and, and hopefully they can be a productive member of society and do whatever they want to do. Now, I, I want them to just go after and be the best at whatever they want to do, right? Of course, they love coming in the gym and lifting yeah. and, and doing that type of stuff. And I love watching them do that, but my wife and I both are not going to push them toward lifting. If they want to lift, I want them to exercise. I'll, I'll say that, mm-hmm. right? But they don't need to try to go into strongman. They don't need to try to go into lifting or anything uh, at, a, at a high level. I just want them to go out and be the best at whatever they want to do. But it, it changed me in a lot of ways, man. I'm sure you feel the same way, um, you know, with having your kids now and and, uh, and your wife. And I know how important family is to you. And And like you said, I think there's a lot of, dads out there that maybe don't prioritize their kids and and their family the same way that that you and I do I mean this is something I mean literally uh I'm out here in Vegas and the kids are back home they sent me a little video they're going to bed they're reading books and I just sent them a little video back but it's like it's important it's important to maintain that contact and and uh you know make them a priority and and I think that you know it's again my mindset and I always use the words be great right I put be great on everything and it's kind of something I've had on my gym wall um for a very long time now but those are the words i try to the message i guess i try to send out to people is mm-hmm. i'm trying to be great i'm trying to be great as a strong man as a businessman as a husband as a father all of these type of things and you know i've got to wear a lot of different hats during the day but when i'm in the moment i try to be as present as i possibly can right so if if the boys are getting home from school and i'm done and and spending those moments i want to do whatever I, I can play with them or I turn into a bull and they ride my back or whatever <laughs> like these things man they're never gonna forget that you know I, I um is that something I could do when I come up ride me like a bull <laughs> yeah bro I I mean it might get a little bit weird I, we probably shouldn't put that on film but you know whatever I, uh, I didn't say with any uh, with uh, no clothes on but fuck me yeah yeah you I mean you just took it to the next level <laughs> you fucking took it to yeah, the next yeah, level yeah. You, went, you went there with your head I no I, I didn't I didn't <laughs> Now I did. <laughs> yeah. Now he's like, let me get some water. Yeah, yeah. No, um, but listen, I, I got to put the, some jokes in there, man. I think that's our relationship, right? Also, of knowing, course, know, know, of knowing course. your friends with Eddie Eddie mm-hmm. Hall, I think mm-hmm. he's he's uh, totally more un, uh, unrestricted than me. Oh, oh definitely, completely. He's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. But everything you said, man, I can resonate with. You know, um, other than the riding the bull part. But we uh, we've had a, in my house when I go home, which is. After this podcast, yeah, I'm hoping to see my boy, which I probably won't, which yeah. will suck. I won't see him until tomorrow morning. Sure. Um, but my daughter will be up. And right now, I actually have my mom and dad that came in two days ago, which I haven't seen in, in several months. That's yeah. awesome. So, again, uh, the bodybuilding for me, and uh, I want to try and also reserve a lot of things. So, when I'm on your podcast, of I course. don't do too much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, but I also want to say that, that you know, bodybuilding has, has been... Um, I was able to not only show me a life that I never thought I'd have, but also change, you know, the life of my parents too. You know, they they sacrificed so much for me and my my brothers um, just to to do what we did, you know, just to go to school, right? My dad worked what's called continental shifts where he'd work one morning's nights, one morning's evenings, one morning's 
uh, afternoons. So his body clock was all over the place, but he was always there for my rugby games too. Lack of yeah. sleep, whatever. He turned up, pushed me and my brothers through our rugby games, and he was actually our coach too. So the, a lot of the, the early days and the early mentality uh, that I had was coming and seeing and, and looking at my grandfather, my father, basically turning up. You know, there was no frills at the end of that six mile walk in the rain for my father it was work he'd yeah. walk from my house because there was only one car my mother needed the car to take my brothers and us to school or rugby games so my father would work to work walk to work 12 hour shift in the rain get there work yeah and, and i'm thinking to myself man like that's work yeah what i do i'm turning up every single day i have no excuses i to like you said uh, and the, the more motto that you live be great right i can be great yeah. at something don't waste this opportunity. These people are telling me. I, I had no clue, Brian. Yeah. These people are telling me you can be the best. I'm sure as they were doing to you, right? Yeah. And then something clicks where you start believing. It's like, can I? Really? I'm a kid from Wales. I come from a small little town. It's like, what, me? Yeah. Why me, right? And then you're like, man, no, I, 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 think I, I think I can. Then I know I can. And then when you know you can, you turn your heart back to front. And it's like, don't waste this. Don't yeah. waste this. And I think a lot of kids have never been told that they can. Yeah. And I, that's why I, I, I try to get involved with a lot of these up and coming guys because some of them, when I tell them, and that's the God's honest truth, when I tell them, it's like, yo, you can be really good at this. They cry. Yeah. They've yeah. never been told this. And this is a sport full of egos, right? And yeah. and again, some people you damn well know love hearing that too. Yeah, oh yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but also the ones that are on the rise that have come from nothing. I mean, you know, there's a lot of guys from Brazil that have come from the... You know, from the Fidel, f- 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 what they call Fidel, what they call the the the, the f- f- Forfell or something like that. I yeah, know what yeah, you're yeah. From about. the kind huts, of like basically, the, man, yeah, man like, made houses. Yeah, not not great housing. Yeah, no, and they've they've pulling themselves out of poverty yeah. through a sport. So you're in that shoes now, right? Because people look at you, and you're such a a wise man with your words. You know. Um, sitting in that chair, you look like a do these things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tyson's going, don't move this hand. He told you also. Yeah, but yeah, but anyway. So you're well, in shoes right now. I think what's neat about it, man, is is the, the fact that you went from being that kid to now you're telling people that, and the impact of your words mm. now to those guys makes them cry. How neat is that? It's wild. Isn't that crazy? Because yeah. you your your opinion, you've walked the walk, man. You didn't just talk it; you walked it. Right, and and I think that that's important because a lot of people now can talk. Talking is so cheap; it's so easy. Everybody can talk, man. It, it's it's can you can you actually walk the walk? Can you do it? Can you for you? Can you get on stage and prove it? Yeah. Right. Can can you come from where you were to prove it? Can I get up in front of people, be willing to fail in front of everybody? Yeah. And execute and win, right? And that's that's the 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 factor, and you can't overlook that right so you know having people believe in you and like the story with your dad it's it's so amazing to hear that because you know my dad was very much the same man it's like the, i remember him getting called into work right it's it's a storm he worked for the power company so the, the power's out he's got to go right and i i don't think as a kid i appreciated yeah how hard that must have been for him to go Right. Like, and I think about it now, it's like the middle of the night, here's a phone ringing. He's got to go get, and and we're sleeping, we're warm, we're good, whatever. And he's got to go out there and execute and get that done and get up. You know, I mean, he was gone before we were up every single day going to work and, and, um, you know, just, just still be at our games. And he coached, I mean, he coached, uh, when I was a kid playing baseball, soccer, different things like that had to be so difficult for him to go be stressed out worried about the things that he had to worry about with work and then then get done with that and put on a different hat to be there when when as a kid you don't realize that man yeah. like you just don't realize how hard i think being a dad now i'm thinking wow that's crazy yeah it's crazy but you know it's uh that a male role i'll say that like a father figure role is so important man and and especially for for young men having a dad like that it sets such an example and it sets up such an example for me. And, and again, I don't think I'm, I have to work hard at all, mm. right? And if I, can't, if I can do more, I will do more, right? And I'll stop when the work's done, not when I'm tired, not when I want to quit. I'll stop when I'm finished, right? And I think that that, that work ethic, doing the things that, that, that you know, we've done, if you're in the gym, that's not, I can train hard, man. 
I can push to another level because there's other people that have to do other things that are that are crazy. And I think I've heard I've heard you say this before. Your work ethic, because at one point you didn't have anything, you don't want to go back to that, right? And I'm the same. I am literally the same, man. Like I know where I was. And I know there were days where I had to go in and say, well, I, I don't know if I can buy this because mm. I don't have enough, right? Or you're, yeah. you're trying to eat more food, but there are certain foods that I couldn't buy because I didn't have enough to do it. And it's, it's you know, I was drinking, you know, tuna shakes, right? I would open up cans of tuna, mix it with some orange juice and slam that because that's what I could afford because they were, you know, whatever, it was 60 or 70 cents a piece. Yep. And know? it's just crap, gross, but I did it, man. Yep. And that was what I could do. But, it, it, you know, again, it's all perspective. Mm-hmm. And it, it's fun. It's fun sitting here with you, your success story, you know, and that's what it is. Mm-hmm. It's truly what it is. And, and all the all the trophies and all the titles, man, and, you know, the knowledge that you gain through that process. It's fun for me, too, because, you know, very much the same where I've competed, I've gained knowledge, I've put in the work. And, and uh, you know, it, it's, again, inspiring that next generation. Like you said, you're going and talking to them. I've talked to all the new guys coming in, right? And I try to give them the knowledge. I, I try to help them in any way I can because... Mm-hmm. At one point, I was in their shoes too, yeah. right? And and um, you know, trying to make the sport better, trying to open new doors. So it's it's all full circle, man. It's it full circle, and it's a lot of fun to uh, to walk the path, right? Like mm-hmm. it's it's fun looking back and saying, "Wow, that like you said that that kid in two thousand five, right? Do you you know, th- did I ever think this is where I would be? Right? I had big dreams, mm-hmm. but you got to exec- execute and you got to put the hard work in and and. Uh, you know, it's, it's again, it's just never being satisfied, yeah. never being satisfied with, with how much has been done. And I don't think I ever looked back and, and probably even at this point, man, I mean, we're sitting here have this conversation and I don't know if I fully have looked back at my career and I'm saying, okay, these are all the things that have been done. I mean, I've been to world's strongest man 15 times now <sighs> in a row. Nobody else has done Nobody. that in a row. And then I've made 14 finals in a row, right? I think the next best is nine. Who was the uh, Terry Hollins. Terry Hollins. I wow. think I think he did nine because it was. A, I remember him and I talking. I was like, all right, well, I'm going to get yeah. to ten, and then he uh, he uh, took a year off there and missed it, missed the finals, whatever. But it's like fourteen in a row, man. Like it's crazy. So it's it's you know, but that longevity and executing at a high level for a mm-hmm. long time, you know, it's just different. It's just different, and that perspective is different, but. You know, it's it's um like I said, man, it's fun and, and uh it's neat neat to kind of look back on the path and then uh you know, kind of be able to share with the next generation with different people that are coming up and, yeah. and um you know not not that I'm done at all, right? Like I'm still hungry and I still I feel like I'm still getting started. Wow. And that's the thing. It, it's it's with so many different things. I've got big goals, I've got big aspirations, things I want to do and you know, I'm trying to level up in so many different areas as well. So, you know, it's, it's also, I think important to say that, 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 you know, I'm just getting started. Right. I, I think there's so much more. I'm just kind of scratching the surface um, with so many different things. You, so, tru- you truly think that you've, you've got a number of years left in the world's strongest man circuit. I'm not, I don't, I don't know that, that I'm necessarily saying that, right. Like I've mm-hmm. got, I've got goals. Yes. I've got goals that I want to execute on. And um, you know, a lot of those goals relate to other things outside of just strongman uh as well so Mm -hmm. you know who knows as far as the career i will say this i my body feels good my you know i guess drive and passion is still good it's more right now time management for me yeah so i have to find the time and dedicate the time to executing Mm -hmm. as far as training goes and recovery goes and and uh you know my prep in general eating eating is a big one uh trying to find time literally just time to eat because i have so many other different things that i've got to take care of so you know i i I don't know as far as the longevity uh with competing uh i i never wanted to be one of those guys that was going to the contest where i was just going and nobody nobody thought i was a threat nobody thought i was gonna do anything right i was kind of like well brian's here yeah brian used to be good or he, he maybe used to be a threat but he's not a threat I don't, I don't want to be that guy, man. I, I don't want to, I don't want to compete until I'm just going there and everybody's just kind of like, Oh yeah, like you used to be good, but you know, I don't, I don't want to do that, bro. I don't, I don't, I don't have any type of, uh, uh, mindset to do that. I want to go in. I'm too, I'm just too competitive, right? At the end of the day, I'm too competitive with it. And, and, um, 
I don't I don't want to walk in and not be competitive. Mm -hmm. Right. I want, I want, when I show up, man, I, I want to put the blinders on and, and walk in there knowing that it can happen yeah. and, it, and it will happen. Yeah. Right. And that's, that's what I think is important with any big contest that I do. Uh, especially now it's, it's, I'm going in to win. Right. That's what it's always been. And, and, and in my mind, you know, even the years, I mean, the years where I've been on the podium and been that close, mm -hmm. it's, you know, a lot of people would look at that and say, well, wow, you got second place or you got third place. It's not good enough. It's just not. And that's for me, right? Yeah. The level of expectation for me is winning. Yeah. Right. And, and people can take that however they want to. That's my mindset. That's yeah. for me. And my level is winning. So, you know, yeah. it's being the best, bro. It's, it's, that's what it is. And, and that's the level that I expect out of myself and the performance that I expect out of myself. And, and second, third, just not good enough. So that, that's greatness though, right? That's the legacy. Um, I, I don't want to ask that question. I do want to ask this question though. So the, the, the second place is, I'm sure they've stung really hard. Yeah. How, how, how do you go back home? How do you deal with life after putting everything and all in and you just come so close and you get the bridesmaid? You've, you've tasted victory. You know what it is to become world's strongest man and you believed in your heart of hearts you were going to win it just like every Olympia and every time I've stepped on stage for the Olympia. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what would happen if I came second place, I'll be honest, because mentally I've already convinced myself. I've done everything, cro dotted my I's, crossed my T's and then somebody else comes and beats me. I... You know, I, I wouldn't know. How have you gone back home after, you know, doing that and, and, and picking up injuries or, or being so close and, and then have to pick back up on, on the on the mentality of everything? I think second place, the times, I mean, the, hard, the hardest for me was 2010 second place because I, I literally tied for yes. first. So it was a tie. They didn't have it written in the rules for World's Strongest Man what to do what, because a tie had never happened. So it wasn't written, hey, we're going to do a count back. It wasn't written that they were going to do a tiebreaker event, which is what I personally still to this day think they should have done and should agree. put in. Um, and they decided to do a count back, and it was that close. And, you know, again, then after the fact, which even stings more, is they changed the rules at World's Strongest Man to whoever wins the stones wins the contest if it's a tie, right? Yeah. So I won the stones Stone. in 2010. So if they would have had that rule in place, it would be five titles instead of four. So I, t I tried to take it as a positive, man. I, I um, it, it, in that moment is actually, it was a six, that was in South Africa. So it was a 16 hour, 17 hour plane ride coming back. I didn't sleep at all. I just sat there and thought, right? Cause it was this close, yeah. this close. And, and there was points in that contest where I dropped points and I should have won. I mean, I, um, several, two or three events, I, I definitely dropped points that I shouldn't have. And I, that's where I was kind of thinking, okay, it's this close. I tied, I got second, I'm coming back from this. And that was the kind of heart to heart with myself in that plane. That moment was what, what am I trying to do with this? Right. Cause I got that close. I literally tasted it. It was just like that. And then to, to walk away with second place was just so, I had to process it. Yeah. Cause he, I was almost in shock. I was like, wait a minute, I tied on points, now I'm getting second place, what is this? And you're, it, you're thinking all these different things, right? Uh, and, you know, for me, that, that was a motivating factor beyond belief. So I tried to turn it into a positive for me yeah. and to train harder, to find motivation in any moment that I needed it, I would just watch that video, right? Like really? the next year, I would force myself to watch it. it was, I hated it, hated it. But if there were ever there was a day where it's like, man, I'm tired, I'm sore, I don't want to put the work in, whatever. All right, Brian, you got to watch this. And then I was like, immediately up off the where whatever out. Yeah. I'm training. I'm 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 gonna go win. I'm going to win. So that second place was very motivating. Yeah. So was it a good thing? I tried to turn it into a good thing. I tried to turn it into a positive instead of a negative. Mm -hmm. But also in that moment, it could have ruined me, right? And my whole career at that point could have been. Well, I got this close. Now it's poor me. I'm not, you know, I, I, I should have won. I should have this and that. And I'm not going to work as hard because it's like, well, I'm just going to, that's, that's what I'm going to hang it all on. I'm going to hang my hat on that second place. But I tied, I came this close to winning. I never got it done. So that was a motivating one. Other ones, 
I look at it the same way. I try to look at it the same way as I, even if I win, right? So what could what could I have done better, you know, to execute? Because I I've never had a perfect contest. Mm. I've never had where I won every single event at World Strongest Man and walked away without being unbeaten, yeah. right? That's what you're shooting for. Yeah. I'm shooting for perfection. I'm shooting for being the best that I possibly can be. So I never have done that. So you can always come back and analyze, right? And 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 maybe that's, you know, some people look at that and say, well, wait, you won the title, but you're still breaking this apart and saying this could have been better. Well, of course I am, man. I'm trying mm. to be better. So second place, I think the motivation just comes even harder, yeah. right? So it's tough. I'm not going to lie, man. The, 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 especially the close second places, uh, you know, that I've had a couple of, it, it's, um, it's, it's motivating, it's crazy though because you put all this work and you put all this time and you're there you do it and um to walk away uh, i don't want to say empty-handed but without the the trophy that i came to get yeah it's tough it's tough man but you feeling. you need you need to walk back and analyze it and say okay what can i do better and i think that that's the thing um you know for other people in a second or third place at World Strongest Man might be the best they ever do, so they're going to take it differently than I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. And I'm all right with that, man. And, and, and some people may look at that weird, and they may say, well, gosh, you should celebrate that. Well, to me, it's not a celebration unless you win. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's just my... You want to be the best ever. You are not satisfied with second places. You're not satisfied with third places. You're not satisfied with making the top 10. You know, it's, that's not good enough. Good enough is winning. Yeah. Right. And so I've always taken it as a motivating thing. I've tried to take it and turn it. I've tried to turn everything into a positive mm -hmm. instead of a negative. I want positive. So let's take positive out of it if we can. Yeah. Right. And, and try to get better. So it's, it's, it's always trying to use it as a fuel versus a, a negative. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sitting here saying that, that in the moment when you lose, uh, I, I'm not down a little bit, right? Like I'm not sitting here and saying, all right, we're walking off the podium, second place trophy. Okay, awesome. This is motivating. You're going to be pissed off. You're, You're going to be through. frustrated. You have to. Yeah. So I kind of allow myself that moment, just like if I won, Yeah. right? So I won. Perfect. We celebrate it for a little bit and then yeah. we're back to work. Okay. I lost. You get to be down for just a little bit and then you, that night done. You, we're getting up the next day and we're going to execute, you know, and that's, I think that's important, man. Like not to let it dwell. Winning is, is this long losing is this long, you know, it, it's, uh, um, Tim Grover. I, I, I'm sure you've probably read his book or like, I really liked his analogy. Like you get on the bus and then you got to take that trip back to hell, right? Yeah. Like, it's kind of like you won, you executed. Now it's got, you got to do it all again. That that yeah. doesn't last forever. Right. You know, it's kind of like, um, it's ironic. Success Sex, is not yeah. final. Right. So it's kind of like, uh, um, and this is like these type of shirts is what I like to have, but it's, yeah. you know, it's interesting the, the perspective, right? Cause a lot of people, maybe it's their, they're a all American high school player or something for the rest of their life. They're telling everybody I'm an all American high school yeah. player, but they never go on to do anything further yeah. and they don't push themselves further than that. But it's like, well, look at that. And it's, you know, you're going to have those successes that will stay with you. And again, it's, it's trying to live your whole life as a champion, mm -hmm. right? And that's what the sacrifice is through the process. So you sacrifice to live as a champion, right? Because once you win a title, titles don't go away, mm -hmm. right? Forever. It's in the history books. You, you did that. You executed on that, but what's next? Right. And that's, you got to keep moving forward in life. You can't, you can't, yeah, you, you can't, you can't even for me, man. It's like I said, all the titles aside, whatever, what's next, what are we doing next? Yeah. Right. And I, I want something next and, and want to push myself to that next level. So, you know, it's, I think that's important, man, but, uh, um, it's, it's crazy. I'm getting all fired up talking. I can about see it you getting like, me fired up. Yeah. It's, it's like, you just, you go through even it. My bro. producer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's getting all fucking yeah. amped up. Though. Yeah. He's going to, he's going to get up and start posing, bro. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, you, you did mention something and that we'll wrap up the podcast. Cause I know you have an appointment and I truly appreciate you, you doing the podcast and I got to shoot home for the phone, but love it. You mentioned something about, um, well, there's two things I want to mention. Um, I did have that second place you mentioned about, and I'll go into details on your podcast, but I know what it feels like to be told by everybody you've got this. It's a different sport, right? One is being subjectively judged. You are, you know, a, a performance sport, right? But um, 
when you have all backstage telling you that you won. This is when I was a 202 before I became 212, and it was the last year. So I wanted to become the first ever 202 and the first 212, and unfortunately it never happened. Um, the crowd didn't like it. You know, everybody was booing. I took it just like you, professionally, but around my circle of people, I think they cried more than me. I didn't. I got upset, but I put in everything into it. They seen what I wanted to do, but I had my moment, and I'm, you know, repeating what you said. I had my moment. I allowed myself to have that. Fuck, oh man, I done everything. Yeah. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Because I wouldn't be in this position. I thought I did. And everything I'd done in this prep, I didn't miss a cardio session, didn't miss a meal, didn't miss a training session, didn't miss everything. But there must have been something. Because obviously I didn't win. The 212 class came along the next year. And I was undefeated after that. It was the worst and the best thing that ever happened to me. And uh, I understand that feeling. I understand the, the, the feeling of being there. And I also understand the feeling of giving everything and, and not being there, right? Um, but now with the evolution of, of Brian Shaw, of, of being there, feeling, you know, what it is to, to give everything and not get it, and then give everything and get it, I think that's one of the reasons why you are, like, you know, the, the champion's champ, a champion's champ, because I can relate to you, and the athletes on the rise can relate to you, because you've gone from nothing to the pinnacle, You've also failed. You've also been injured. And, and every athlete in any sport can look at Brian Shaw and go, man, what an unbelievable, fantastic athlete who has, you know, gone, gone to the highest of highs and till, turned his heart back to front every single year and gone after that title again, gone after that title again. And I admit, I, I, I've said this also too many times, massive motivation to me, man. I'm always, you know, blowing you up before the, the events and, and, you know, wishing you the very, very best. Absolutely, and, yeah. Um, and I always want to see you, you know, do the very, very best. I, I think you're, again, not, not only a fantastic athlete, but an, an incredible dad and one that wears many hats. And um, as you said, you know, you're all about legacy. Strongman is not going to define Brian Shaw. I think what's to come in the future is, and if the future is very exciting, I see, uh, and I don't want to say anything on the on the podcast; it's not my place. But I see how busy you are. I see what you're doing, and I see also, you know, what you're doing to trying to do with time management. And that's what I'm at right now in life yeah. too. I am living a time managed life more than anything else because I wouldn't be able to be doing this right now as a competitive athlete going to Mr. Olympia. I tried to do elements of it, and all my businesses were based and balanced around me on stage. But now when I'm off stage, the competitive aspect of things has been filled, and my bandwidth has been filled tenfold and more. Now I'm doing other things way outside the sport that I ever, never could have imagined. But you are opening doors and doing some incredible things whilst still being an athlete, mate. And that is fucking hard as hell. So. I take my hat off to you, man. You, you're, you're an incredible guy. It's, it's been fun, man. I mean, at the end of the day, I started this for fun. And uh, I always, through all of the, the good times, the hard times, the ups and downs, whatever, I try to go back to that. I started for fun. I did, right? And so all, the, all these other guys in, in, uh, you know, in the sport, I guess, that have come and gone, they maybe didn't love it the same way or they wanted to get something out of it or their their motivation came from a different spot. Whereas for me, I just love it, right? The love is there and I love the sport, which is why I'm trying to give back and do different things within the sport and, and create opportunities. But you, you touch on something there I think is really important and not that we want to, I feel like you and I could talk forever, which is- admit. Um, I just want you to get your appointment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, um, I'm the, your, your circle, your circle of people, yeah. right? And you said- you, you, you made a comment, right? You got that second place and your circle of, of people around you was more upset potentially than you. All the people around me, around you going into something, they are invested. They may not be the one, you know, necessarily in their training or whatever, but they're sacrifices that are made. I mean, my wife, my kids, my family, my training partners, di different people through the whole path, man, like they're invested too. And, and you know, then the fans, Mm. Right, because the fans get so upset as well, 
and they want they so you carry that i think as you as you get more well known you carry that with you and it's all motivating and and, and it's awesome and, and uh you know that can't be underestimated as as well but uh it's it's fun man you got to go back to enjoying it yeah. right and you got to enjoy life and you 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 need to put positivity out and that's that's what it really at the at the heart of it it's what i've tried to do i've tried to put positive out i think when you put positive out you get positive back and um you know i think that we need more positive in the world but you know that that positive comes with also the underlying statement of you need to work hard as well right mm -hmm. so your your positivity is there but you got to put the work in on of top of it like like it's not all going to come for free it's not going to be handed to you but you can be positive, you can be motivated, and you can work hard, and you can achieve what you want to achieve if you're willing to do that. You know, and I think that you're a, you're a testament to that as well with everything that you've done. And again, you know, going back to success and and you know opening doors and, and that type of thing, it's it's um it's unique uh, as well, right? And and I think that it, it's great. And you know, I know I know for me, it's um something I I like kind of biting off more than i can chew right i i do i do enjoy that and kind of test in the water and and uh yes i've tried to do a lot i think i can still do better i think improvements can be made and i don't think that i'm perfect in any way shape or form at all but i don't i think that a lot of people can relate to that uh because what i try to put out is is being a human being and not that i'm above anybody so i mean i've had conversations with quite literally billionaires and I've had conversations with just a person on the street that, that quite literally only had the shirt on their back. Mm. I'm going to treat those two people the same way. Same. Right. And I'm all always, and that's, I think at the end of the day, it's not about what this person can give to me. It's what I can potentially give to them. And I think that that's the underlying message, you know, for me, I've always thought that way, mm. right. With, with expos this weekend, um, it'll be the exact same thing, man. Like the line of people, all those people are waiting to meet me. I'm going to give every each and one of them uh, the time and, and, and respect. And, and no matter how tired I get or whatever, it's like I'm going to leave that and I know how motivated I'm going to be because of all those people. Yeah. And that's such a cool feeling, man. It's, it's neat to, you know, kind of have that that happen, yeah. right, and, and walk away. And it's like I know I'm going to be exhausted. I, I'm already exhausted. <laughs> we haven't even started because we're running around and doing all this. You're, yeah. you're the same. You're the same, man, yeah. but your heart – has always been good and, and you've always been that way with people as well and, and that's huge it's it's rare it's rare man i mean you're 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 we're having a conversation between two guys in this world that are rare it's hard to find that right it's, it's very hard to find that and, and that's where you know again we we kind of connect on a different level um because of that i believe i truly believe that too man and you know just touching on that um uh, fan base you have you know, we are both very blessed to have, you know, two of the biggest lines in exports and we're in two different sports. And I will also see a lot of my fans standing in line for you and your, your fans standing in for line for Absolutely. me. So Absolutely. when I see that, it, it makes me happy to know that, you know, you're touching uh, and, and impacting, you know, people in so many different sports. And these exports are kind of the, I would say, the, um, the, the example of of everything that you're doing, the unseen things that you're doing, the, the videos, the posts and everything else. Yes, you can have likes and you can see a number, but when you come to an expo and you get that physical interaction and somebody is telling you a story that they watched your video and you changed their life or something you said changed their perspective or something you done made them walk a little different, talk a little different, you know, that, that that's incredible. So from here to you, Matt, I am... Uh, Incredibly honored to not only call you a, a good friend, but also honored to see the legacy that you have now. Just keep on fucking going, man. Appreciate that, brother. Right back at you, man. Yeah. and uh, Love it. It's been a great podcast. I am now looking forward to... Uh, talking on yours because i try to be very reserved no it's <laughs> honestly bro we can, I, I think this is awesome but we'll we'll, we'll have a great time you know now, too, i mean man. now you're locked into coming to colorado right yeah and so. i can't i can't piss off brian shaw <laughs> <laughs> anyways guys this All is right. straight out the lair brian shaw one of the greatest to ever do it four-time world's strongest man out